the Libya story and the deadly terror attack on the U.S. mission in Benghazi, timing, what the administration knew and said, and when it knew and said it, is really at the crux of this entire story. Let's take another look at the timeline we first brought you two weeks ago. Now, updated. August 2012, an unclassified report called Al-Qaeda in Libya, a profile compiled by the Defense Department's Combating Terrorism Office and the Library of Congress, states that under the direction of Al-Qaeda's senior leadership, Al-Qaeda affiliates in Libya, Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, or AQIM, and Ansar al-Sharia are gaining strength, are likely joining forces, and are, quote, currently in the expansion phase. September 5th and 6th, at their convention in Charlotte, Democrats touted a crippling of al-Qaeda. Ask Osama bin Laden if he is better off now than he was four years ago. Al-Qaeda is on the path to defeat, and Osama bin Laden is dead. Just four nights later, September 10th. A video surfaces of al-Qaeda's emir, its spiritual leader, Ayman al-Zawahiri, calling for jihadists to avenge the death of Libyan terrorist Abu Yahya al-Libi, killed in a drone strike in June. September 11th, on the 11th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, expected protests erupt in Cairo after an anti-Islam video is played on Egyptian TV. The U.S. Embassy in Cairo puts out a statement condemning the video. 8.30 p.m. local time in Benghazi, Libya, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. U.S. Ambassador Chris Stevens says goodnight to a visiting Turkish diplomat, escorting him to the front gate of the consulate's compound. Officials say, quote, everything is calm. There's nothing unusual. There has been nothing unusual during the day at all outside. No protests all day. 9.40 p.m. Benghazi time, 3.40 Eastern. Agents in Building C of the compound and the Tactical Operations Center hear gunfire and explosions at the front gate. An agent sees on his cameras that show the perimeter of the compound dozens of armed men flowing into the compound. The attack is underway, an attack that would last some six hours. About 5 p.m. Eastern Time, the first wire reports cross of an attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi. That night, the Romney campaign releases a statement condemning the attacks, but also criticizing the Obama administration for the earlier Cairo embassy release about the anti-Islam film. Also that night, the White House disavows the original Cairo embassy press release about the film. September 12th. The U.S. ambassador to Libya, our ambassador, has been killed along with three other Americans after a series of attacks. America's commitment to religious tolerance goes back to the very beginning of our nation. But let me be clear, there is no justification for this. None. The focus at the Romney press availability, his overnight press release. Governor Romney, do you think, though, coming so soon uh, after the events really had unfolded overnight was appropriate? Uh, the White House also issued a statement saying it tried to distance itself from those comments and said they were not reflecting of their views. I had the exact same reaction. The Rose Garden, minutes later. We will not waver in our commitment to see that justice is done for this terrible act. By this point, according to sources, the U.S. intelligence community already knows the attack was a terrorist act, has listed it as such internally to unlock resources, and believes it was al-Qaeda or al-Qaeda-linked groups in Libya. Sometime within the next three hours, President Obama sits down with 60 Minutes. I, I was pretty certain and continue to be pretty, pretty certain that uh, there are going to be bumps in the road. That afternoon, the president leaves for a campaign trip and fundraiser in Las Vegas. 6 p.m., Fox News already has intelligence sources saying al-Qaeda-linked groups could be behind the attack. U.S. officials are investigating whether a pro-al-Qaeda group was involved. It was a coordinated military-style commando-type raid that had both direct fire and indirect fire, military movements involved in it. it this was a well-planned, well-targeted event, no doubt about it. And we weren't alone. This was executed by a group that is either associated with or sympathizes with al-Qaeda. Roughly 9 p.m., President Obama mentions the Libya attack, but spends most of his time campaigning. Now, uh, because Nevada is a battleground state, uh, you are aware that we've got an election going on. From Nevada, the president goes on to campaign in Colorado. September 13th at the State Department, questions about security. Uh, we did evaluate uh, the threat stream 
and we determined that the security uh, at Benghazi was appropriate for what we knew. And another statement about the anti-Islam video. There is no justification, none at all, for responding to this video with violence. September 14th. The unrest uh, around the region has been in response to this video. Uh, we do not at this moment have information to suggest or to tell you that uh, would indicate that uh, any of this unrest was pre-planned. The president and secretary of state greet the bodies of the fallen at Joint Base Andrews. We've seen rage and violence directed at American embassies over an awful internet video that we had nothing to do with. It is hard for the American people to make sense of that because it is senseless. Later that day on Capitol Hill. That it's pretty obvious that there's very likely that there was a terrorist organization that uh, affiliated with Al Qaeda, it was in El Benghazi, that had uh, at least some role in this attack. September 16th, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Susan Rice goes on five Sunday talk shows. Fact, this was not a pre-planned, premeditated uh, attack. That what happened initially was that it was a spontaneous uh, reaction to what had just transpired in Cairo uh, as a consequence of the video. And then as that unfolded, it seems to have been uh, hijacked. What we think then transpired in Benghazi is that uh, opportunistic uh, extremist elements uh, came uh, to the consulate uh, as this was unfolding. We believe that it looks like extremist elements, uh, individuals joined in that, uh, in that effort with heavy weapons. Remember, State Department officials on that conference call October 9th confirmed there were no protests outside the Benghazi consulate before the attack. Zero. And quote, everything was calm from video surveillance and security officials there. September 17th, Fox first reported the no protest development the day after Rice's appearances, six days after the attacks. An intelligence source on the ground in Libya tells Fox there was no protest and the attacks were not spontaneous, the intelligence source said, adding the Libyan attack was planned and had nothing to do with the movie. September 17th. Simply on the basis of what Ambassador Rice has publicly disclosed, does the United States government regard what happened in Benghazi as a, an act of terror. Again, I'm not going to put labels on this until we have a complete investigation, okay? You don't, so you don't regard it as an act of terrorism? I don't think we know enough. I don't think we know enough. Okay. September 18th on the David Letterman Show. Is this an act of war? Are we at war now? No. What, what I, happens here? Well, here's what happened. You had a video that was released by uh, somebody who lives here, uh, sort of a shadowy character, who, who uh, is an extremely offensive video directed at, the, uh, at Muhammad and Islam. Making fun of the Prophet making, Muhammad. Making fun of the Prophet Muhammad. And so uh, this caused great offense uh, in much of the Muslim world. Uh, but what also happened was extremists and terrorists uh, used this as an excuse. Uh, to uh, attack uh, a variety of our embassies, including the one, uh, the consulate in, in Libya. And September 19th on Capitol Hill, the head of the National Counterterrorism Center, the only administration official to testify so far. Question: I would say yes. Uh, they were killed in the course of a terrorist attack on our embassy. Meantime, CNN had recovered Ambassador Stevens' journal at the consulate. That the ambassador specifically mentioned the rise in Islamic extremism, the growing al-Qaeda presence in Libya, and said he was on an al-Qaeda hit list. September 20th. Yesterday, the head of the National Counterterrorism Center is up on Capitol Hill, open hearing, says it is terrorism, it was a terrorist attack. There were developments yesterday, let alone what we reported. Just put that aside. This is the New York Times. There was not one story in the New York Times about Libya, let alone the terrorism angle. There's not a story in here about Libya. Now, it's, it just seems strange. It is, uh, I think, self-evident that what happened in Benghazi was a terrorist attack. We have reports that the White House said today that the attacks in Libya were, were a terrorist attack. We're, we're still doing an investigation. Uh, and. 
there are going to be different circumstances in different countries. And so I don't want to speak to something until we have all the information. September 21st. What happened in Benghazi was a terrorist attack. September 24th. Then I heard uh, Hillary Clinton say that it was an act of terrorism. Is it? What do you say? Well, we're still doing an investigation. Uh, there's no doubt that the kind of weapons that were used, uh, the, the ongoing assault, uh, that it wasn't just a mob action. September 25th at the United Nations. There are no words that excuse the killing of innocents. There's no video that justifies an attack on an embassy. Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb and other groups have launched attacks and kidnappings from northern Mali into neighboring countries. Now with a larger safe haven and increased freedom to maneuver, terrorists are seeking to extend their reach and their networks in multiple directions. And September 27th. It was a terrorist attack. The reason uh, I think it pretty clearly it was a terrorist attack is because a group of terrorists uh, obviously uh, conducted that attack uh, on the consulate uh, and uh, against our individuals. October 8th. And today Al-Qaeda is on its heels and Osama bin Laden is no more. More sound was obviously added after that hearing today on Capitol Hill. We thought we'd start off with just the panel after that long 11-minute piece you just watched, so let's bring them in. Steve Hayes, senior writer for the Weekly Standard, Mara Lyson, national political correspondent of National Public Radio and syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer. Okay, Steve, this Libya situation, uh, today's hearing, and what you just watched in context. Well, I mean, I, I think the timeline that you just played is, is absolutely jaw-dropping. I mean, there are so many times at which the administration makes claims that are inconsistent with one another and inconsistent with what virtually everybody understood was the, the ground truth behind the attacks. And we saw examples of this throughout the hearing today. There was one particular interrogation by uh, Congressman James Langford of Oklahoma. He was talking to a senior State Department official, Charlene Lamb, who's in charge of security there. And he asked her in detail about where she was that evening, the night of the attack, September 11th, who she was talking to, what she was doing. And she answered him in some detail, said, I was here in the United States. I was in contact with people on the ground as all of the attacks were unfolding. I talked to them all night. I talked to them the next day, getting details about what precisely had happened. And Langford, I thought, very, very skillfully then turned to her and said, how is it that you were in contact with these people on the ground as this was all happening? And five days later, Susan Rice was out selling the country a totally different story. And what makes this even more incredible is you see the President of the United States on David Letterman selling a story that at least some people understood immediately was untrue. Immediately. We also had intercepts that very night of discussions between Al-Qaeda and the Islamic Maghreb terrorists from that organization and local jihadists that told us this was a terrorist attack, that suggested that this was premeditated. And yet for weeks the administration went out and sold a totally different story. And Mara, to hear Jay Carney today kind of try to repackage this today was, was kind of interesting. Well, to say that this is what we thought at the time and information has evolved. The, the, I think the most kind of mystifying part of this is that Susan Rice was so definitive and, and was so kind of out over the tips of her skis, as they say, uh, on the Sunday talk shows. Why not say then? We're doing an investigation to find out what happened instead of saying definitively this was a spontaneous protest that in some cases got hijacked. I mean, that's caused more trouble for them than the attack itself, I believe. Which is often the case in this yes, town. Yes, often the case. Charles, to Steve's point, the shocking thing was the State Department last night on this conference call, we weren't invited to it. They say it was an oversight. We pointed that out last night. Uh, they say everything is calm. The ambassador walks the Tur Turkish diplomat essentially out to the road. There's nobody there. They don't see anybody on the video. The security people are saying it's been like that all day. Nobody's around. Nothing unusual all day long. As Steve points out, this official says they talk all the way through the attack. They talk after the attack. Six hours long this attack took. And they have all of this information, and yet five days later, Susan Rice goes out on five TV shows and doesn't have that information, yet these people do. It's, it's such a disconnect. It's beyond a disconnect. That is utterly damning. There are two scandals going on here. The first is the cover-up. 
we now know, and, we, and they knew earlier, there was no mob, there was no demonstration, there was no incentive about the video. That was all completely false story. This was simply an attack of armed men who infiltrated and killed our people. So everything Susan Rice said was a confection. It was an invention. And it was, as you showed, it was repeated again and again. You had Hillary Clinton speaking about the video as though the body of the ambassador was lying next to her. Then you had Susan Rice spinning the tales. You have the President of the United States addressing the General Assembly more than two weeks later talking about the video, the insult to Islam, etc. You have this entire story going on all along. They're trying to sell the video, they're trying to sell extremism, and they're trying to sell all of this at the time when they know it isn't true. So that's number one. And that's a scandal, and I think it has to do with the fact that they were spiking the football over the, the death of bin Laden and al-Qaeda a week earlier in Charlotte, and this was a contradiction of it. The second scandal is the lack of security at the site before. So what happened before? And I think that what happened was the administration, it wasn't a lack of money that they withdrew, withdrew all the support and they didn't put up the required barbed wire and the fences and all that. It was under the theory, which starts with Obama at the beginning, we don't want to be intruders in the era, we don't want to be oppositional, we don't want to have a fortress in America, we, want no, we don't want to look imperialist. We want to blend in with the people and help them build. That's a noble aspiration. And that was the motive for having very light security. But it was a catastrophically wrong decision to do it in Benghazi, in a no man's land, in Dodge City, and it cost us the lives of the ambassador and three other Americans. Moved well on from worrying about what Mitt Romney said and when he said it, you're much more concerned yes. with was there enough security? Clearly there wasn't. Absolutely. And secondly, why, why, with all the world's intelligence amassed that you have at the White House and the Pentagon and so on, why could you make statements four or five days after incident like this with completely the wrong explanation for what has provoked this attack? Here, it is irresponsible and un-American, quite frankly, for my colleagues, my Republican colleagues in Congress to be jumping on this immediately as some uh, political opportunity. Well, I don't, uh, yeah, but I, look, you, keep, you keep going back to the same please, thing. Please, the, Pierce, the, let the, me finish my sentence no, because you keep, you keep not letting me finish my sentence. You are flogging sentence. the wrong dead horse. It's not about what Mitt no, Romney or Republicans I'm not. did. The, the, the really, not, I'm not saying... The really important Pierce. horse that should be flogged <laughs> is, the, is the behavior and the statements of those who were in positions of responsibility and we would assume knowledge. Mm. And it's pretty un-American, pretty un-American to, to be putting out completely false statements before you know the facts, isn't it? Piers, it is not, it is not okay for you to be saying that the administration was putting out completely false statements. They put out information that they had at the time based on the intelligence they were given and then as the days went on wrong. and more. Well, that doesn't mean it was false. It means it wasn't, doesn't mean that it was deliberate. It means well, wait a that minute, the, wait what a it minute. means. If you put out, Pierce, you put out is, a false Pierce. statement, then it's false. But you're it's suggesting wrong. that there was. It's, it's, it's Pierce, both what of you're those suggesting things. is that it was somehow deliberate. It was not deliberate. There's nothing sinister about that. What's terribly unfortunate, though, is that you do, there's no way around these investigations that, that Republicans in Congress and Mitt Romney have leapt to, uh, to go after the administration, questioning whether or not there was any kind of deliberate attempt to mislead. Well, there the wasn't. answer to we that, should be closing the answer ranks, to that, Debbie, is working that, together to the prevent answer this from to that happening again. Is to make sure the original statements that are made are accurate. Anyway, for now, Debbie Westman Schultz, thank you very much. The Libya story and the deadly terror attack on the U.S. mission in Benghazi. Timing, what the administration knew and said, and when it knew and said it, is really at the crux of this entire story. Let's take another look at the timeline we first brought you two weeks ago. Now, updated. August 2012, an unclassified report called Al-Qaeda in Libya, a profile compiled by the Defense Department's Combating Terrorism Office. Video is played on Egyptian TV. The U.S. Embassy in Cairo puts out a statement condemning the video. 8.30 p.m. local time in Benghazi, Libya, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. U.S. Ambassador Chris Stevens says goodnight to a visiting Turkish diplomat, escorting him to the front gate of the consulate's compound. Officials say, quote, everything is calm. There's nothing unusual. There has been nothing unusual during the day at all outside. No protests on the Library of Congress states that under the direction of al-Qaeda's senior leadership, al-Qaeda affiliates in Libya 
Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, or AQIM, and Ansar al-Sharia are gaining strength, are likely joining forces, and are, quote, currently in the expansion phase. September 5th and 6th, at their convention in Charlotte, Democrats touted a crippling of al-Qaeda. Ask Osama bin Laden if he is better off now than he was four years ago. Al-Qaeda is on the path to defeat, and Osama bin Laden is dead. Just four nights later, September 10th. A video surfaces of al-Qaeda's emir, its spiritual leader, Ayman al-Zawahiri, calling for jihadists to avenge the death of Libyan terrorist Abu Yahya al-Libi, killed in a drone strike in June. September 11th, on the 11th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, expected protests erupt in Cairo after an anti-Islam ball day. 9.40 p.m. Benghazi time, 3.40 Eastern. Agents in Building C of the compound and the Tactical Operations Center hear gunfire and explosions at the front gate. An agent sees on his cameras that show the perimeter of the compound dozens of armed men flowing into the compound. The attack is underway, an attack that would last some six hours. About 5 p.m. Eastern time, the first wire reports cross of an attack on the U.S. consulate in 